bias. So in our last video, we talked about the structure of the junctional epithelium. We also at the end mentioned LPS, which is an endotoxin which drives the pathogenesis of gingivitis. So as we talk, said before, the structure of the junctional epithelium is connected by hemidesmosomes. So these are semi-permeable um, desmosomes which allow LPS to transmigrate through the junctional epithelium, which is not good. This drives pathogenesis. However, the main aims of these hemidesmosomes is to allow immune cells, such as neutrophils, for example, to go back through the junctional epithelium and fight the invasion. When there is an invasion, the junctional epithelium creates cytokines such as interleukin 8, interleukin 1, and tuna necrosis factor alpha. And these all um, promote inflammation and upregulate everything. It's also very important to understand that interleukin 8 mainly communicates with the underlying blood vessels and the neutrophils in these blood vessels and tells them to migrate out of the blood vessels into the area of attack. And this is known as the first line of defense. So in the junction of epithelium, um, the neutrophils as part of the first line of defense form a barrier um, and this wall is known as a palisade. And um, this palisade sort of blocks the LPS um, endotoxins from coming through. It sort of blocks them there and it also engulfs the LPS. Um, such as over here. Also in the underlying tissues um, are some T and B cells that are present, which are immune cells. And there are also macrophages. Macrophage. The macrophages are important because they, they come to the site um, when the neutrophils are overwhelmed and they also um, are important because they are able to engulf thousands of bacteria whereas neutrophils have a higher turnover rate and neutrophils die off really quickly. So macrophages come to the site to engulf the dead neutrophils and, and just clean up the area. Okay. This is um, part of the second line of defense. So as the plaque and the biofilm matures, it overwhelms the first line of defense, which causes an increase in pro-inflammatory cytokines. These cytokines stimulate fibroblasts and neutrophils to release enzymes, enzymes such as MMPs and collagen esterase. And these enzymes cause the breakdown of gingival collagen fibers. The broken down gingival collagen fibers um, have spaces between them which allow for an influx of immune cells that can get through to promote healing. So as we know gingivitis is a repairable condition and um, this is due to the TIMP enzyme which is released by fibroblasts and this encourages the regeneration and repair of collagen fibres. So the more TIMP we have compared to MMPs and collagen esterase, the more it promotes the healing of the gingival collagen fibres. However, if the biofilm is not removed, we get the opposite happening. So we get more MMPs and collagen esterase enzymes and less TIMP, which promotes collagen breakdown and gingivitis. So at the same time all of this is happening, um, perivascular mast cells around the junctional epithelium react to the interleukin-8 secreted by the junctional epithelium and break open and release histamine. These histamine molecules then diffuse into blood vessels around the junctional epithelium and causes vasodilation, which is shown here. This means that the vessel opens up more and blood flow is increased.
due to the blood flow increasing, there is a great influx of neutrophils and other immune cells into the area. So clinically, the increase in blood flow causes the gingiva to become really red, um, really swollen, um, and this is seen as BOP in the sulcus. So this vascular reaction upregulates the complement system, and the complement system is there to help mediate everything, really um, increase its speed, increase its efficiency, um, and then this brings in more macrophages and more immune cells to help um, break down the LPS invasion. So just explaining the clinical significance now. So the dilation and proliferation of blood vessels increases the redness of the gingiva and the BOP. And the increased influx of immune cells to the site increases the swelling of the gingiva, which causes bulbous interdental papilla and rolled gingival margins, and also exudate. So the breakdown of the underlying connective tissue and the expansion of the basement membrane and rete ridges creates more area for the influx of inflammatory cells and this causes loss of visible stippling and the gingiva texture loses its orange peel effect. So the increase of biofilm and plaque equals a migration of the junctional epithelium laterally, which means there's no bone loss yet um, and there's no attachment loss. So this is just um, seen sometimes as a perceived increase in pocket depth, which is known as pseudo-pocketing. And the clinical importance of this is that gingivitis needs to be reduced to um, get ideal pocket readings. Hi everyone. For well, now you finish watching the video that your BOH3 peers have put together for you, Ruby, Jenny and Joanne, who have done an amazing job at simplifying a very complex concept. What we'd like you to do now to demonstrate your understanding is one of two things. You can either represent the pathogenesis as a series of uh, steps, okay, so you can list the steps. And some students in the past have told me that they prefer to learn it in a linear fashion even though it's not a linear process. So you can uh, break it up into however many steps that you like, anywhere from 1 to 20, 25, 10, really doesn't matter. The other option you've got is to prepare a more complex concept map. So you can put gingivitis in the middle here and then you can have the different parts of the pathogenesis coming off of the central area and then arrows at con connecting them, interrelating them. Again, how you represent your understanding at this stage, it doesn't matter, as long as you either bring your list or your concept map to class. When you get to class, what we're going to do is then work in our groups and we're going to construct a composite concept map. So everyone's going to contribute to preparing a concept map, but this time we're going to use lots of plasticine, Play-Doh, and uh, crafts to put it all together. So by the end of all that, really we're hoping that you would have consolidated your understanding to prepare you for the big one, the pathogenesis of periodontitis, which is a lot of fun as well. So we really hope you've enjoyed this new way of learning and I look uh, forward to working with you in class to construct our fancy concept map. So enjoy.